it seems to me that the, the rapture theory as normally conceived tries to base itself on a couple of verses towards the end of 1 Thessalonians 4, but reads them out of context and puts them into a framework of thought which is strictly speaking a dualistic framework in which the name of the game is to leave earth behind and go to heaven instead. Whereas the whole point of the last scene in the book of Revelation, Revelation 21, is not that people are going up from earth to heaven, as in the so-called rapture, but that the new Jerusalem is coming down from heaven to earth. The rapture theology gets its mileage particularly, as I was saying last night in a lecture, from that implicit Gnosticism which regards the world as a shabby or bad or dangerous place and sees the point of religion as being to escape the world. But the whole point of Jesus' teaching and proclamation, the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer, is that God's kingdom shall come and his will be done on earth as in heaven. And at the end of Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He doesn't say, I'm off to heaven and the sooner you can come and join me, the better. That's not how it works. <laughs> and, in, and in 1 Thessalonians 4, Jesus will appear. And Paul is, Paul is doing three things in 1 Thessalonians 4. Echoing, on the one hand, Moses coming down the mountain, the blast of the trumpet and so on. Um, on the other hand, Caesar coming to a town or city, part of his empire, and the citizens going out to meet him somewhere outside the town because they wouldn't just stay in town waiting for him. That would be very impolite and perhaps politically dangerous. And thirdly, he's echoing Daniel chapter 7. Now, Paul does this. Paul mixes his metaphors. He takes different images and he shoves them together. In the next chapter, in 1 Thessalonians 5, he warns people uh, that the thief is coming in the night, so the woman is going to go into labor, so you mustn't um, get drunk, but must stay awake and put on your armor. Now, <laughs> so when he says that there is coming a time when it'll, it'll be a bit like Moses coming down the mountain and the people looking up to see him. It'll be a bit like Daniel 7, the son of man coming up on the clouds. And it'll be a bit like Caesar arriving at a city. We shouldn't expect to get a woodenly literal historical picture out of that. And the point about the parousia, about the royal appearance of Caesar with, uh, at a town, is that the citizens go out to meet him. We go to meet the Lord in the air. Whatever Paul thought would be the objective correlate of that. Not in order to stay there, but in order to escort Caesar, or whoever it is, back into the town. So even if you want to take 1 Thessalonians 4 moderately literally, then you would have to say that the reason for meeting the Lord is not to stay away up in heaven, but in order to escort him to the place which is his by right, which is this earth. And with that, I've basically deconstructed, I think, the worldview within which the rapture uh, gets its, gets its uh, emphasis. And it seems to me that a fully biblical eschatology has to talk not about that, but about the new heavens and the new earth, the new creation, which is our birthright as Christians, and over the whole of which Jesus is Lord.